the autumn of 2010, Helene Loya approached me and asked me if I would be interested in joining with her to create a film about her mother-in-law, Mary Loya, and the history of their family farm, lovingly called Journey's End. I was introduced to Mary the following week, and we began our own journey together, exploring old photographs and letters, speaking of Mary's mother, Harriet Seymour, and her forever friend, Ethel Freeman, known over the years as Bucky. After countless hours of videotape, many photographs, and visits, Mary and I both enjoyed immensely. We co-wrote the short synopsis of Journey's End Farm. I give you now Mary Loya, living on the land of her ancestors, a place of wonder in her childhood, a venue of respite in her adulthood while raising a family of her own, and a home presently filled with comfort and memories. Journey's End Farm is a reminder of the simplicity of living on the land, with the hope of continuity for her family in the Ashfield community in the years to come. William Shakespeare wrote a song in Twelfth Night that ended, Journey's End is Lover's Meeting. And this, so this is a tale that begins with young lovers who then became forever friends over the course of a lifetime. These two women, my mother and her friend shaped my world and gave it form. These two women are responsible for my presence on the land upon which I now live, surrounded by members of my family, each in their own lot on that land, which has been a part of my family's history, or should I say her story, for over a hundred years. We call our family farm Journey's End. Journey's End has been a permanent home to my sons Tom and Mark, their wives Nancy and Helene, and their children for the last 30 years. It has been a year-round home for me in my retirement since 1998, and a place that will be my future home for those who choose it of my grandchildren and their families. The story of this peaceful slice of heaven began more than a hundred years ago in the summer of 1908. These were the days of thriving mills and downtrodden mill workers in Massachusetts, and days, too, of the private charities of upper-class ladies. There was no governmental funding in those days but also a time when it was very unusual for any women to hold property in their own names. Most women were seen as property themselves, as belonging to their fathers or their husbands. It was the confidence and vision of two such upper-class ladies who discovered a broken-down farmhouse up in the hills and felt they simply must have it. Steeped in their Unitarian ideal of making a better world, they envisioned a place of comfort and respite for women who worked in the overcrowded mills of Boston in a setting of beauty, simplicity, and camaraderie away from the city. This land, then, holds not just the story of my own family's early life, but also the stories of all of those young women who found happiness and peace among the Ashfield Hills and the farm where they gladly worked for a week or two when they visited. I imagine the cottage as it was then, <laughs> bursting with activity, daily chores, meal preparation for a crowd, nightly singing, and a good deal of fun. And when I look to the future, I visualize a long line of children, grandchildren, and those yet to come living in much the same way as that long ago time. <laughs>